There we go. Well, hi, Amanda. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here with you. Well, thank you for being here and on our very first, you know, talk conversation. So we're going to have a conversation with Amanda today and we're lucky to have Amanda. She's a face, uh, faith based female. She's an athlete. She's a mom, an entrepreneur, a spouse and above all a human being. Um, and she's fabulous. So we'll get to the fabulous part, though, in a minute. <laughs> well, just a little intro to what we're doing after several months of being isolated and, you know, being kind of disconnected, even though we have so much social media and so many things telling us what to think. I kind of felt the need to create a space where people, especially women, you know, can find common ground and lift each other up rather than, you know, drag it down. And I thought this would be the perfect platform because it's kind of how you and I were chatting before about, uh, you know, it's not pie. And we've heard that before in terms of equal rights and things like that, like giving right. someone a compliment, empowering people. It's not pie. There's not a finite amount. Giving some creates more. It's this magical pie machine, right? right. I agree. No, it's true. And, you know, the goal is to celebrate ourselves and our victories and our defeats. And sometimes just to have a conversation about tough topics because, you know, we're locked in our houses, our apartments, or, you know, you're afraid to say what you're thinking because you don't want to be categorized and you don't want to be pigeon held. Like, especially as women, yeah. we're so complex, right? We have like 18 parts, but how easy is it for people to look at you and be like, you're the fitness girl. Yeah. And just label you one thing out of the, yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It's very nice that you're doing that because, um, a lot of people, especially in the world that we're living in now, um, they feel like they can't really be themselves and speak their mind with freedom and like openly. So it's nice that you're trying to create a space that gives you that, you know? I appreciate that. And I appreciate your willingness to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and just to be upfront, the only expertise I have in this is I was a college athlete myself, and then I've worked 18 years in higher education with empowering, you know, young women and even colleagues to find what resonates, to find their best selves, and, you know, to find those interpersonal connections for success. So that's my background. I am, you know, doing other things and certifying in different areas, but for right now, it's from my opinions or my opinions based on experience and and what I've learned throughout life. And I'm sure yours are the same, you know, based upon your life and experience. So people will take this for what it is. If you want to join the conversation, you're welcome to at any time. But just know that, you know, these are our thoughts and experiences and opinions. Right. That is true. All right. So Amanda, wide open question. Tell us about yourself. Did she just love to start with that open-ended question? No. Um, well, you mentioned a few of the hats that I wear, right? So my name is Amanda Ricardo, and I'm 27. Um, I was born in the Dominican Republic, um, and I always used to travel to the United States in the summer to visit my cousins and my, my family here, but I decided to stay here when I was 12. So I've been living here since I was 12 years old, um, went to school, all that good stuff. And now I am a teacher for um, in a bilingual program um, in the Bronx in New York City. I love it. I teach kindergarten beauties. Um, they're my babies, and <laughs> they it's, it works out because I always say I'm a I'm a big kid myself, so it's like great chemistry there. Um, I have a four year old, very active young man. Um, as he calls himself. So yeah, I'm pretty busy. And as you know, with Freeletics as well, trying to improve myself every day and help others along the way. So that's just a little part of me and who I am. That's a lot of parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> pieces of the pie putting me together, right? Right. There's always more pie. We just bring more in, right? right that's like, right. <laughs> I mean, even through COVID and things, juggling with your, your child at home, right? And trying to work and Zoom, like, how has that been? It's been tough, like, especially because um, I've been teaching remotely as well. And he's been going to school remotely in some days. So I'm literally like 
in one computer keeping him in and he's four so imagine a four-year-old trying to sit in front of a computer listening to his teacher and his it's it's and then my students are five five and six so it's like i have to be super entertaining and then i have to be the mom and the teacher at the same time it's been a challenge but what can i say i mean you gotta do it so it's been tough <laughs> It also has good parts because I've been, I've learned new skills, obviously. I was never computer savvy. And now I feel like I can be given a degree in engineering, computer, something like that. And then um, my son as well, he's learned the computer. He mutes himself, unmutes, and it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. So there's some good side of that too. <laughs> Yeah, he's not to that age yet where he can just type his name in as reconnecting, right? And leave the screen black. So they just think he's like. No, no, not there yet. We're not there yet. Yeah. I've seen him on your videos though. I'm pretty sure that it's coming. <laughs> he'll probably, th yeah, if he hears you, he'll, he'll, let's not give him ideas because he's a pretty bright <laughs> four year old, but yeah. I love it. Thanks. So, you know, speaking about you as a human being and a female, um, what are you passionate about or like what keeps you up at night? That's a, well, if you would have asked me that question, let's say four years ago, it would have been, I would have given you a very different answer, but um, everything about me stems from my faith, right? And what I believe in. Um, so what really keeps me up at night, honestly, is how thinking of how I can be better and the, the, like, how can I serve those around me and just make a difference, like a true difference in the people near me, but also the world, like, how can I um, just serve others and make, as cliche as it sounds, the world a better place, which I feel like we need a lot of right now, making it better. So, um, I would say just how I can be better and improve myself and give that to others, um, is what keeps me up. Cause a lot of the times, um, I don't know how I can do that. Right. So figuring out how I can use what I'm passionate about, my, my love and fitness, the, the, um, hunger to serve others and maybe combine that and show that to the world and share that with everybody. It's, some of the things that I think about and just keep me up yeah if that well, makes sense it makes so much sense <laughs> right like and we try to we try to right approach it in like the six different spheres that we have and then it's like you almost feel like you're giving little bit little bit little bit instead of targeting right. because it's like I can do this I can do this I can do this right and then it's like did I do enough exactly that's the question like can I be doing more um so yeah, that's definitely something that I think about often. That's very selfless and beautiful. Just so you know, I'll give you a kudos on that. That's huge. It is. And I'm sure you're teaching your little man, right? To do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing also that I think about is like, how can I um, kind of like filter my son out of the noise of the world and make him be like his own little mind and his own human being that um, despite of what's going on stays true to what he wants and what he believes in and like shares that with others so in order to make a difference. So it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. <laughs> I can see why it keeps you up, yeah. right? <laughs> so knowing that's what you think about and what, you know, you're inspired to do, what's motivating you? Like, you know, when those days get tough, you know, what, what motivates you to keep on your track, whether it's with your fitness or your faith, like I'm sure even with your faith that people come at you and you're like, Whoa. Yeah. I I've honestly, I started to be spiritual and, and, and found my faith when I had my son, actually just the miracle of life made me ask a lot of questions. I'm like, I'm holding did, did my body. Just do this. Like how did this <laughs> happen? Um, literally this was my reaction. And then I started like seeking and it's like, there's gotta be more. And like, so that's where everything started. Um, but it, it's been a journey. It, it has, because by just for this, a lot of people feel like when they come to faith, especially like in Christianity, which I'm a Christian, um, 
everything is like colorful and your life is perfect after that. At least that's what is expected. But in reality, it's the opposite. Because if you truly believe like myself in Christianity and like good, you, there's also evil, right? And um, I feel with everything, this is with fitness and everything that if you are doing something good, if you're doing something right, there's also another side that doesn't want to see that. Um, and that could be in, in any in any field of your life. But yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge, especially nowadays, because um, through my faith, I have struggles, um, flaws of mine that I feel like that I need to work on. And, and some people don't understand that. And also a lot of my beliefs and the actions in my daily life stem from my faith. Um, that's like my core. So some people that don't share that don't understand that. And it's been a challenge, pretty much attacks in some way about mm -hmm. some of the things that I believe in. Yeah. And why I think a certain way. And it's just not a lot of people share the same um, beliefs or thoughts. So it's, it's hard sometimes. Yeah. No, I bet it is. And it's interesting because I've known you for, for a minute. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I've known you for a minute and I found you to be so non-judgmental and warm and, yeah. you know, oh, well, of course, I'm always honest. We know that even if we don't like what yeah, I know, <laughs> uh, but I bet, you know, a lot of times people have a preconceived idea about religion that you're just going to judge anybody that's not like you. And you're yeah. like, no, and knowing you, that's not you. You're like, come here, give me a hug. Yeah. Pre-COVID hug. Free COVID hug, but come here. Air hug. <laughs> it's, um, it's, yeah, it's completely the opposite. And, and it's something, it's funny because um, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine and it's something that um, like turns me at my core when people um, just label people and just, um, just because you believe in this or do this, then you do that or you don't do this or this is how you should think. And it's just, and also a lot of people have Christianity wrong, like, like true Christianity, like reading the Bible, Bible Christianity, like a word aligned with the word of the book that a lot of people claim to follow and believe in, but not everybody reads it or even know about it. So it's like you have all these people and not too obviously not judging or anything, but then it, it comes back for me because I'm labeled the same way. But all these people that claim, for example, in my faith to know um, Jesus and to follow him yet they do completely the opposite and then they show that to other people um, that misinterpret what Christianity truly is and what it's about and it's like what you said judging others it's you're nobody to judge others based on a true Christian faith um, and we're all flawed we're all sinners right that's what I believe so it's like who am I to um, point the fingers with my dirty hands in other words <laughs> hey buddy yes he made an appearance i love it yeah he did quick one yeah no and what you're, you're speaking the truth and that and I, I like how open you are and we appreciate it i'm sure people that are listening or that watch will be able to resonate with that right because we all have different walks and paths and whatever religion you are you just want to be able or or lack thereof you just want to live your life right yeah yeah no I, I'm with you. I'm there. I'm understanding. I'm hip to what you're putting down. Great. <laughs> well, knowing what's, you know, knowing what, you know, motivates you and, you know, what keeps you up at night and what you're passionate about, what do you think are, and you can split this up. Okay. You can say, Hey, in my professional life or in my personal right. life, or maybe it's a holistic piece. Yeah. You know, it's a tough question. What do you think are your three core values? Um, so I would have to bring that back to faith first, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of my core values stem from that. Um, like because oh. of, oops, sorry, because of what I believe in, um, a lot of my core values stem from, like I said, my faith, right? So like love, patience, all these things stem from my faith. However, I do feel like holistically, um, determination and growth. Determination because um, I'm the type of person and I've learned in my life that um, 
if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't love yourself, if you don't push yourself, then other people won't. Um, and nobody can push you to do anything that you really don't want to do yourself. So being determined in accomplishing what you want is key. Um, and also understanding that there's always room for growth and improving yourself. So those are really core values of mine that I live by because, um, a lot of the times I can be a perfectionist. I'm really harsh on myself, but understanding that it's okay. It's okay if I don't have it together right now. It's okay if I don't, if I can't do push-ups right now, right? It's okay if I can't, if I can't do this perfect um, because as long as I continue and I continue with my determination and I keep practicing, I can become better and there's always room for growth and everything. So I try to live by those. So um my faith, determination, and growth. If I had to pick three out of the many <laughs> that I, I know it's, it's a hard question, but you know, yeah. regarding push-ups, uh, I've seen your Instagram and I've seen your Archer push-ups and everything else, and <laughs> so you won't use push-ups because <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but I I do say that though because when I first started my fitness journey. I, I couldn't do, and I think I was mentioning that to you yesterday. I couldn't do not even one knee push up. Um, and it's, it amazes me, and it's like proof of my determination and hard work, at least in fitness, um, of what is possible with your body that you never could have even thought. I could have never, if you would have spoken to me a few years before I started um, my fitness journey with Freeletics, I would have told you you're crazy. I have no upper body strength. I can never do that. That looks great, but I can't. Um, so now being able to do any push-up variation, any variation of push-ups and, and do amazing things with my body, it's like a trophy, in other words. It's kind of like, here you go. You've worked hard. You've grown. And you still have a lot more room to grow. Um, a lot more things that you can, a lot more skills that I don't have that I can still acquire. So um, I do use that example because at one point I couldn't do not even one. Okay. <laughs> I believe you. I don't. Um, no, I do. I believe you. No, it, it, your choice of words is interesting. I'm sitting here because I'm like, basically, your faith is giving you the determination for growth. So, how that's all tying together is just beautiful. It's very eloquent. Well said. Hey. Well said. <laughs> so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you harder now. You ready? Oh, no. Sure. One word to describe yourself. That's a tough one, yes. but based on my experiences and everything that I've been through and how I've um, carried myself through my life, I would say resilient. Um, resilient is a one word. It's a word that describes me and like a lot about my character. Um, because one thing that I thank God for is that throughout my life, regardless of what's happening and the noise, I, something in me doesn't let me give up. Um, and it allows me to just keep going. So resiliency is something that I feel like it's very well embedded in my being. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Love it. It does. You're a fighter. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I love it. That's very good. I love it. You also bring everybody with you on your journey though. I noticed that about you. Like it's not about Amanda's journey to excellence or to positivity or with growth and determination, you regularly will bring other people with you in that journey. Thanks. I feel like it's, that's actually, it's nice that you say that because even with like my Instagram and all of that stuff and social media, I try to portray um, me as raw as possible. I mean, I'm not going to put everything on there, but, you know, obviously, <laughs> but I mean, raw as in like authentic, not trying to be, um, what a fitness guru or what a fitness, um, girl is supposed to be like, I, I just hate labels. And I just like, that's one big, a uh, big, big thing for me, resiliency and authenticity, because in this world, I feel like everybody you're told what beauty is. You're told how you're supposed to behave because let's say you're a woman or a man, you're told how, um, pretty much what to think in many times, right? Like you're, you're, we're kind of like being programmed to be what some sort of whatever the world wants you to be. And I'm the opposite. I'm like, Hey, being fit doesn't mean you need to look this way. Being fit, like you still go through hardships. Like 
don't look at especially with social media like you said earlier that it makes it if it makes it instead of helping the world i feel like it's setting it back a little bit um because um you have a lot for example there's a big issue with people comparing themselves with others. And I've had people approach me like, Hey, I would love, I'm a mom. And I can, I like, how can I um, lose as much weight as you have and all these things? And I'm like, Hey, don't let, let's not start comparing ourselves. And like, even me at one point looking at all these people and it's like, how do they do it? How can I make, how can I be this fit? And how can I do this? And it, it's like a trap that you can help it. Um, I feel like I went on, I went off a tangent over here, but it's just so many things that are connected to what I was trying to say. Um, but yeah, like with my, going back to my point with my, um, social media, for example, um, I do share a lot and I try to bring others to the point that you said, because of that same thought, I feel like just being yourself and like sharing the also the bad that it's not just the highlights of someone that it's real because we all share the good but then the bad days we keep it hidden so somebody may look and say wow I'm such a excuse my language shitty person or I really don't have it together and look at all these people and it's like no that's not true we show you what you want we show what we want others to see how we want to portray right so in my Instagram I, I try my best to show my struggles as well and and just bring people along and try to show them that um you know perfection is not real and just be you be true to who you really are no i love it it's great i mean I, i've seen your dance moves they're excellent <laughs> i wouldn't say excellent i try i try <laughs> thanks I've seen what you're eating you do really put it all out there in the best way right i mean there's one thing like we don't want to show, I think as women, we feel a responsibility to not show all the bad because you don't want, you don't want the pity party. Right. right. You're, like, exactly. I'm, you're like, I'm not showing you to feel bad. Like if I'm showing you this, I want to show you that I'm real. I don't need your sympathy. I don't need, I don't need you to say something to comfort me. I just want to say, Hey, we have up days and down days. Success right. isn't linear. I'm a human yeah. being. It's true. It's funny that you mentioned that because, um, I was at the gym and I, and I put a video up about this, like just me ranting, right? Um, Cause I was at the gym and this girl talked to me and I noticed that her workouts would be affected. Obviously she's new in the gym. Um, and she was like looking around and kind of like deciding not to do a machine because maybe there were too many people there and stuff like that. So I approached her and I ended up working out with her and we had a beautiful conversation. And part of the conversation was like comparing yourself to others. like we all had a beginning. Like if you walk into the gym, for example, um, not everybody that's as fit and like with doing crazy things, they didn't start that way. We all have a beginning. So it's, it's a journey, right? Just stop comparing yourself and enjoy the journey. And it made me, um, it made me uh, share. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it with my alopecia areata, the issue that I have with like hair loss, um, so I have an autoimmune disorder that when I'm stressed or anything triggers it, I lose hair by patches, right? And right now I have one and I shared um, that. Like, if you look at my hair, this is part of the thing that I said in that video. Like, if you look at my hair, you would say, wow, she has a lot of hair. But then if I flip, then you see the reality of what I'm really struggling with, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm covering everything that's underneath. Um, and a lot of people reached out to me like, oh my God, this video was um, amazing. Thank you for sharing. You don't understand. I'm also dealing with what you're dealing with. And I thought I like was the only one or wow. And it's like, everybody started opening up and I'm like, wait, I wasn't ready for all of this. I just shared what I'm going through, but thanks. And the, the conversations that we were having were so beautiful. And I'm like, everybody's just so busy looking at the highlights of others that people realize that that's not true life. People also have their down days and their struggles, the things that they struggle with on a daily basis. So it's, it's nice and even ties back to what you're doing here because having those conversations show the, the truth, the reality, you know, and it's just, it's, it's beautiful to see. Yeah. It's amazing when you almost like, I don't know, sometimes I have been guilty of, <laughs> You know, if somebody's like, hey, do you need help with that racket? I'm like, I got it. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, and you're like, 
you don't need to tell me. Yeah. Right? But it, it's nice when we can make ourselves a little vulnerable because I think it creates space to have conversations that are real and to say, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, Amanda, fitness goddess, right? Like <laughs> she's got real things going on and right. she can connect with you. And, you know, I think that's when you try to, when you kind of come into your true community is when you have that vulnerability, but everybody's still being there and saying like, you got this, you know, right. like you, uh, that does not define you. You're amazing. Keep rolling. And thank you for showing me something that I didn't want to talk about because it, I mean, hair loss in women, it's like taboo, right? It like it it's nuts, like nuts taboo. Like I worry about it. Like I've got lovely locks right here, you know, but it's <laughs> like when you get out of the shower and you're like, it, it's worrisome. And I'm like, yeah. Am I I think, and especially as you're going through life and, you know, different things and stress, like I'm a stress monster, like stress monster. So, you know, all these things affect us. And I think yeah. that that's beautiful that you created that space for people. Thanks. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's nice. And it also makes you feel like, especially with all those, it, it's kind of like a double gain because a lot of people gain from the message and the things that you share. But also when people started to reach out to me, it gave me like, yeah, I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only one. And it's okay. Kind of like a confirmation that it's, it's okay to not be okay. Like you, you know what I mean? Like to just go yes. through that and not have perfection and, and, and cause it's not real. It's okay to be authentic, to be you, to be real, the good and the bad, you know? And I think to, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And that's something that you know, I've recently learned, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a student every day, I swear. And just meeting people where they are and allowing them to be in their space right. and not trying to rush them through perfection and rush them through training and journeys and mentality and just be like, you know what? You want to cry? I have this wonderful friend. Her name is Bridget and I've known her for years and we would work together like right out of college. We were, you know, we were working together and she'd be like, you need to throw yourself on the floor and cry today. I'll do it with you. Like, do you need me to be there with you? Yeah. Can we cry? And it's like, you, that, that stands with me. Like, you know what? You're having a day. You throw yourself on that ground. You cry. I'll cry with you. And then we'll get up and get after it. But you take your time and process. And it was right. something so beautiful. And like from a 23, 24 year old person, people to say that back and forth to be like, you know, you want to cry? Let's cry. It's that idea of, you know, creating that space and being with people in their journey. You know, you're, you're supporting them but you're not putting them down and you're not rushing them. But when they're ready, you've got your right. hand out to help them stand up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's I kind love of it. like empathy, right? Like meeting that person in the, in the place where they are and just being a company, you know, that's yeah. just as simple as that. Um, Cause it's true. Like a lot of the times, like, especially when somebody comes to us, like crying, I'm having, you, we sometimes our first instinct is to try to improve, like try to fix it as opposed to like, maybe in, in many times, no matter what you say, it's not going to change how that person is feeling. But the fact that you join that person in their pain and their struggle, whatever it is that they're going through in their excitement, whatever it is, it can really make a difference. Cause then it changes the fact, like the feel of them feeling alone or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's, it's, it's amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It really is. <laughs> so knowing these amazing feelings and the things that you've learned, you know, what piece of advice would you give past or future Amanda, if you could, like you can pick, you get to pick uh, your choice. That's a tough one. Um, honestly, if I can tell my pet, this goes for both all the new Amanda and <laughs> it's to, um, continue to cultivate the the virtue of patience because especially <laughs> obviously as you can see if it's for the past Amanda that's something that I can still work on growth remember I said growth right <laughs> um no because I feel like by cultivating that virtue of being able to wait and be in patience um it can really change your life and I say that because um we live, especially my, my, the gener my generation, we're like instant gratification is a big thing. You want things now. You, It's like everything is so available to you that nobody 
wait. Nobody waits for, to see the results of hard work or, or of, of persistence or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so patience, I would encourage the old me and the future me to continue to cultivate that because um, I feel like it's, it's definitely something that um, can push you further along in your career and personal life, even anything. And, and yeah, does that, does that make sense? It does. Patience is, it's a virtue that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people struggle with it, it just, even like the patience, when you get an email or a message that sets you off to not fire back immediately and be like, you know what, I need to step away. Yeah. I need to breathe. I need a third party to read this communication and tell me if I should like burn Rome in this moment. Right. And waiting, right? Like if you're trying to move or get a new job, or if you're trying to progress in fitness journeys and with your body, right? That patience is incredibly hard because you're like, I'm doing all this work, whatever it is. Why am I not being chosen? Or why is my body not changing? Like I see Amanda. How come my body doesn't look like her? I've been doing this workout for a week and I don't look like her and my body hurts and I'm hungry, right? Like, no, yeah, it's true. It's patience. And it's, it's funny that you mentioned that, like those examples, because um, when I first started my, my journey um, in fitness, I would put all this work and like tweak my diet and this, and then I wouldn't see the results and it's very frustrating right especially when you can't see um the results of what you're the work that you're putting in um but it'll come and it comes through that through being able to wait and enjoy the journey not to take because that's one thing that i've had to learn too it's not to take the joy out of the journey being so focused on the destination enjoy it because when what, what has happened and it has happened to me is like when I get those results and it's like oh but I made myself miserable throughout the way so is it really worth it or I'm here what now you know what I mean so it's like just enjoying things and just being patient because if you do put in the work and you you have the consistency things will happen and you will see the results in anything in life um but it's hard it's easier said than done so that's why I always say and then remember, future me, patience, wait, work hard, continue, it'll come. And then the old me definitely needed to hear that. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Patience. Patience is, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. It's hard to come by, but well-earned. You know, I think you hit something right on the head there, though, when you said, if you're not enjoying the journey, what's the point? Right. Because like when you get to the that and, and, and it comes to like even money, right? You work so hard for all this and it's like you don't enjoy the journey. Once you get all the money and the wealth that you want, then what? Like, was mm -hmm. it worth everything that you did behind for that? If I don't know, I just feel like and, and I've evolved, I've grown throughout my life, right? Like I've I've gone through stages, but then I've realized what's really important to me, in my opinion, and I'm just like the whole stress and and everything that we put ourselves through it's not even worth it it's like, mm -mm. what like i'm here now but then in, later i can be gone and then if i'm if i waste my life and my moments just so focused on this thing that it's not a guarantee because life is not guaranteed then you know what's the point so yeah but it's definitely easier said than done but it's something that again it's a choice that you make um daily it's just like working out you choose to show up and get the workout done it's the same thing every day it's like a reminder you know i'm putting in the work i'm doing this um keep going at it i'll see the fruits of of this eventually and soon <laughs> when it comes if you enjoy the process a lot of the times you don't even notice that you've gotten it because you're so um, busy enjoying the moment. So it's, it's, yeah, I feel like it's definitely something that we should all do and practice more. <laughs> practice, practice hard. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I'll do better. Uh, I definitely get caught up. I will caught up in the end goal, right? The race. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It is, 
we all do. Especially when you look on Insta and you're like scrolling, I, I'm guilty of being like, mine's more like, damn, how do I do that? Like, Yeah. <laughs> It's more where I sit. <laughs> so like, okay, bringing it back to like push-ups, for example, right? I had a journey with that one exercise alone. Like just seeing the, the progression and the progress that I made. Um, but like when I started going from wall push-ups, because I couldn't even do knee push-ups, to okay, now I'm able to do these and moving to the next step, but not being so focused on I can't do a push-up because then if you're so focused on your on your final destination you I feel most of the time I focus mostly on the things that I cannot do versus what I can which stresses me out more which causes more of this negativity and just like me being harsh on myself and all these things um so I feel like by truly practicing and enjoying the the things that you can do and the blessings that you have um, will make the journey a lot more enjoyable and will get you to your destination faster. And you may not even notice when you get there because you're just so focused and enjoying the whole process, if that makes sense. It definitely does. Yeah, I think you hit the, once again, beautifully said, you know, when somebody will be like, you know, your time is great, your form is great. Oh, you could use a little bit of strength on that pull up, but like your burpees were on point. All you're thinking is, right. <laughs> yeah it's true no it's true i like your framing that's not that's not positivity coming through the framing right <laughs> yeah i love it i love it thank you so you know what is one thing like if you had to pick one thing that you want people to know about you what would you want that to be um like about me per se is that i'm growing every day I am not this only one thing. And I am also changing something, a person that is being molded every day into a better version of her, um, which I feel like in a way, um, the world, we as a as a world, right? We should be okay with more, which is like growth and understanding that nobody's perfect and that people will evolve and change. I believe in that. Um, so yeah, I would want people to know that about me, that me, I, I strive for becoming a better version of me, um, of Amanda every day. So trying to do things to really be better than yesterday. So like, how can I take things a step further? That's a big part of my character and who I am. Um, and that's why I do a lot of things that I do because I'm trying to um, just simply better myself. Like I, like I say, even on my Instagram, I'm just sharing my journey and helping others along the way. Like I'm trying to improve myself and become better, but also taking those with me that, you know, need the help and that maybe I can save from making the same mistakes that I did and stuff like that because I've already experienced that. So just that I'm growing. Yeah. Growing with grace. Growing right. with grace. Aging gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So, you know, as you're growing with grace and as you're aging gracefully, which you are very young, <laughs> And lovely. And I think you will, you will age beautifully like a fine wine. So there's no worries. Let's see. Um, I hope. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, and I know that, you know, you like to make that, that space, that safe space and encourage other people on the path. Now, you know, either way you respond to this, it's not going to hurt my feelings or anybody else's. <laughs> Do you think that there's a necessity to have like a space for female athletes or females in general to like spend time for growing or, or is that just something that, you know, maybe more as a community? Like, what are your thoughts on that? No, I think it's definitely needed. I feel like um, everybody needs a space where they can come and be themselves and be vulnerable and, and get support from others that share, that have some sort of common ground with them and share um, what they may be going through or like just strengthen each other. Because like, like I said yesterday, when we were working out, um, I've been low on motivation lately. 
I obviously have the habit of working out. This is with, with um, my fitness, right? So I won't stop working out because I have the habit and the determination, right? But the motivation is not always there. But when I surround myself with others that um, maybe are on the end of on that hype of being motivated or that just push me or expect me to continue, um, it motivates me, it pushes me. It's like, oh, they're doing it. So I got to keep going. So it's like, like, oh, if I was by myself, I probably would have skipped that burpee, the last one that I couldn't do, but they're watching me and they're killing it. So I got to kill it too. And it's like, it's just, you need that, that, that motivation and the help. And I feel like as a community, um, like everything is better when you work together with others. And even if, cause I, I myself can be a loner for many things. Like I'll just do my own thing and, and whatever, but I, everybody in one way or another needs that community feel. Um, even with like Freeletics, for example, on the app, if I have like two, three, four days without working out, I'll get a comment or, a, and I'm like, oh, darn it. They're expecting me to work out. I better get my workout in. Or like, it's just that constant reminder and just support that keeps you going. So definitely it's needed. Um, and it's something that should be available for everybody. Yeah. He's making his, his little by little. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The multitasking, the, the good role modeling, right? He gets to see mom doing it, getting right. it. Love it. So one yes. final question, and then you can continue your day, even though I've enjoyed this so much, and I appreciate you very much for sharing this time and space. If you had to give a piece of advice, or if someone, you know, you notice somebody is just feeling unworthy, I won't even say unmotivated, right? We won't go there, but we'll say, you know, if they're feeling like unworthy, what would you say to them? Um, <clears throat> I would honestly tell them the opposite of what they're feeling, that they are loved, they are worthy, and yeah. that they can. However, what I would encourage them and push them to do is to examine where that feeling is coming from. Because I feel, um, and when I've been through my dark places in my life, it's mostly because of things that are thrown at me or, or the environment around me. It's not so much about me. So self-examination and like really examine yourself, how you can improve, how, where are these emotions coming from and, and owning them as well um, can take you over that hump. Um, but always understand that people are worth it and that they are. Um, stemming from my faith, we're children of God, right? So we are worthy. He created us to be um, unique and loved and we all have a purpose. So um, telling that, that's exactly what I would tell that person that they are loved, they're worthy. Um, and as I said, I would encourage them to um, examine and really study where those emotions are coming from and try to take them from the root. Um, because I've been there and understanding why I'm feeling a certain way or, or where that emotions are coming from um, can help a lot in the long term. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think someone's looking for some mom time. I'm not going to lie. Yes, this is my one of my motivation right here. Well, hello, motivation. Did your mom get a thumbs up? He's like, I don't know if you can see his yeah. little <laughs> Well, thank you again. And you guys have a beautiful day and enjoy your time together. Thank you for having me. Say bye. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.